Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys some more algorithms that you need to use if you're not already using them because they are so useful. These will save you time, help polish your game, but most of all, make everything more smooth. And of course, we have to start off with a smoothing algorithm. Now, I kind of showed this last time with the size thing, but I didn't really expand on the full potential of this wonderful block. So you can pretty much use it with anything and it'll smooth the values out. So how it works is you put in its desired value, then its current value, and then you add a smoothing factor. So for instance, you could put its desired position at 100, subtract off its current position, which in this case is X, and then smooth that out. If it's zero, it won't move at all. And if it's one, it'll instantly go there. So I'll do the middle, which is 0 0.5. And you can see that it smoothly goes to X100. And I can change this to anything I want, say whatever negative 25, and it moves there. Now what's really cool about this is you can use it for pretty much anything you can imagine. For instance, I could do a change size by and copy all this, put its desired size like 150, subtract off its current size like this, and then smooth it out for say 0.8. So you can see that it goes to size 150. So really quick, if I set this to like 0.2 and now change this, you can see that it goes really, really slow versus if I did like 0.9, it pretty much happens instantaneously. So this is just very useful for polishing off and smoothing your games. Okay, so next up we have this kind of custom block that does a lot of math stuff, and it basically just makes a sprite or a clone point towards a coordinate on screen. So what I mean by that is you can just pull out this custom block and then type in any coordinate you want. So I'm going to do x100, y25, and that's like right here up to the top. So you can see if I click on this, there we go, it points to there. So you may be asking yourself, why not just use this point towards sprite? Well, here's why. So when you have a bunch of clones, you can't pick to point towards a specific clone. It won't work. So what you could do instead is have a list of a bunch of positions and then find the position of that clone with like an ID, say, and then point towards that position with this. So it's just a very useful thing for all sorts of different things. So here's how you build the algorithm out. You need to first take an input X minus its current X position, which is just its coordinate on screen. Then you want to divide that by, you can go ahead and duplicate all of this and take the Y, which is its other coordinate, minus its y position. Now you want to take the a tan of that. I think that's how you call it. A tan. I think that's what you call it. A tan. Yeah, I, get, I don't know. And then you want to go ahead and add onto that. Take a times operator and put 180 times the y position less than y position like this. And there you go, that is the algorithm to point towards a coordinate, and then I just put it in a custom block so it's nice and clean and easy to use in just this block form. And I found this super useful algorithm on this forum's post in the Scratch forum, so I'll leave a link to this post in the description down below. Okay, so next up we have this little algorithm that is so, so useful for scrolling games, and it is a move steps block. And once again, you may be wondering, why not just use the built-in move 10 steps? So all this block does is it makes it move in the direction it is facing. As you can see, it's facing like this angle, like that kind of, and it moves in that. So the reason you'd use this is for scrolling games, you can't use a move 10 steps because you are constantly going to a variable like shown down here. So you can't just move 10 steps because this will overwrite it. What you have to do is actually make your own custom system. So if I start the script, you can see that it constantly goes to the X minus scroll X, Y minus scroll Y. So that's like a basic scrolling setup. And you can see if I show the scroll X variable and change it to a slider, I can actually scroll the camera so you can kind of imagine if the camera was constantly following the cat and then I could do move say 25 steps and it moves in its direction. Say if I turn like 25 degrees counterclockwise and move 25 steps, it does the same exact thing but just with the scrolling. For this one, you'll just need to change the x variable by, pull out a abs of block and change this to sign. Then you want to do the sign of direction and take all of that times the amount you want to move. So say one is just one pixel. Duplicate that for the Y, make sure you change that 
input to y and then for the y you want to make sure you do cosine and that will work for you right there and if you want to increase the amount it moves you could do like five and then to clean it up you could put it in a custom block like this and take these steps as an input and then you've basically created your own custom scratch block that works really cool okay and last but definitely not least we have a very useful one called off screen check thing and it basically checks if a sprite is off screen so this is for scrolling games of course and the x and y position should actually be rounded as well i forgot to do that earlier basically this will say true if it's on screen and false if it's not so what you need to do to make this work is you run that in a forever loop and then input the x and y minus scroll y and all that stuff so that's like its camera position or whatever you want to call it if we run this block it'll say true because it's on screen but if we get the scroll X and scroll until it's off screen, there we go, it says false. You could kind of clean this up a bit by putting the go to all this and just putting the X and then Y. You can see that this functions exactly the same. It's just cleaned up a little bit. And then to actually use this, you would check like say, if all this, that means it's on screen. So if it is on screen, then you can simply just show but if it's off screen, you probably want to hide. So now if we click on this, you can see that it will work. But then once it's off screen, there we go, it hides. So it actually can let the sprites go off screen because if you didn't know, Scratch has this annoying little thing that makes it to where without this code, as you can see, even though the scroll X is way off the screen, it the cat is still just stuck like a bug or something on the side of the screen. I don't know what I'm even saying. So yeah, that's just another little helpful thing you can use in your scrolling games. I hope these algorithms help you out. And if they did, then make sure you hit a like button and not a like button, hit the like button, subscribe. Thanks for watching. This has been Owen and I'm out. Bread.